Hi, welcome to VNN to our next episode of our discussion series with uh, Ambassador Praveen Verma. I will talk about uh, different uh, subjects which are relevant today. Uh, welcome to VNN, Praveen. Hi, Bala. Nice to be back here after a short break, I would say. Yeah, about a fortnight almost, yes. So what's happening now in the on the China-India frontier? Uh, apparently, the Chinese uh, ambassador has said, oh, uh, disengagement is done. And the Chinese foreign ministry says, oh, everything is normal. Everything is back to normal. What's happened is they have, they came in, a, maybe uh, to give an example, they gave came in about three or four kilometers. Then they go back one kilometer and say, okay, now that's status quo. Is, should that be acceptable to India? No, I think our authorities have, or Indian authorities have already reacted to that and said that uh, that is not true. Uh, and um, Chinese, it's, it's it's an old thing which they've been doing all the time. One step, for, two steps forward, one step backwards. So this they have done this time also. Of course, in the Golan area, what? Golan, yeah. Golan area, they did withdraw. The Golan area, they did withdraw it from thing. But in other areas, they have again done the same thing and they have not withdrawn fully. The disengagement is not complete. And... Uh, both sides, the diplomacy is on, the generals are on, uh, but uh, it is it will be a slow and uh, very difficult uh, movement on that side. But that was anticipated. You see, Chinese immediately uh, vacated the Golan so because it was in the heat, and Indian population was totally uh, against uh, all all these uh, actions taken by the Chinese. And they wanted the Indian government to take some immediate precipitate action. And the government actually banned those apps and uh, people started talking about boycotting Chinese goods. And maybe that prompted them in some way to come, mid, come a little bit forward and to at least calm down the population and the government's uh, uh, anger. But the pandemic so that's saying those areas, yeah. Even the COVID issue was there, and one, would blame, one is still blaming COVID for, to them only. But uh, they, they took it in a different way and sort of uh, took one step, calmed everybody down, and then keep, they keep on giving statements. Because last time when we spoke, I recall, uh, the Chinese ambassador had given a statement that uh, this has, there has been some uh, misunderstanding between yeah, two friends and... And a very conciliatory uh, statement was given by the Chinese ambassador. Uh, people got quiet and everything went on. But then, uh, well, you see, people forget. And the government banned these apps. That's fine. They banned another 40 apps. That's fine. But uh, there was a call by the people to stop using Chinese goods. What happened to that? Uh, there are some government regulations which have come up about... Uh, redrafting the quotations and the bids so that government uh, Chinese companies do not have a uh, sort of a prior uh, claim on the whole issues. But then uh, things have quieted down. Nothing else has now, Another thing I saw in the news uh, yesterday that India, I mean, Turkey, Turkey is so anti-India these days and we are giving three, three shipbuilding contracts to Turkey. Why should we do that? They were, they were signing an agreement there yesterday. They were signing something. Why, why, why is India so soft on these things? Again, economic relations go on different key and the political relations go on different key. That's why I think we make and, a mistake. And you see, people like Austria, USA and China, they are at loggerheads. But contracts continue. The big problem is the biggest problem in all these contracts, in government contracts at least, which are... Actually, the Chinese company would be bidding through intermediaries or Turkish companies bidding through intermediaries. Companies. The L1, what you call the lowest one port. And once you get to the L1, it's very difficult to get out. It's only in some, some cases in World Bank quotation where you have a 10% latitude. Mm -hmm. But generally, once you've caught the L1 port. What is L1 means? The lowest? Is it? Lowest, lowest port. Okay. Basically, it's a, and when you assess a contract, you get to L1, L2, L3, the lowest, second lowest, third lowest. So once you get to the lowest, that, that is one issue. Political considerations uh, are there, but our relations with Turkey is not that bad anyway. 
that uh, we totally ignore uh, the benefits of being doing trade with them. Like like in all, my entire country, entire world has been talking about COVID and has been talking about uh, having a front against the Chinese, but have has any country stopped any bilateral trade or economic agreement with China? No. Trade goes on. China has entrenched itself. Or, 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 all of us have entrenched ourselves in such a rigorous, complex supply chain and value chain system okay. that you, you are stuck in the sense that uh, um, it is very difficult to get out of it. Now, there has to be a systemic boycott of the whole thing, which uh, there was a cry about the Chinese goods in India, but it never happened. And uh, it, the situation is still live, and I don't know. Uh, both sides are mob mobilizing the forces over there. Things are uh, going down. The, and much more money is spent, and uh, uh, people have to adjust. I mean, India has to, will have to some sort of some do some changes in its foreign policy orientation also, because it, it cannot, uh, what you say, be friendly to everybody and aligned to none. That's yeah, where we are at the moment. Out, the crux of the problem. Yeah, we are still sitting on the fence. For the last yeah. 70 years, yeah. we are still I, non aligned, still non aligned, and friends with everybody. But then um, Chinese have, I have taken advantage, and we've done the same mistake that which we did, did in 1962. They were they China, was, China was saying, Oh, India should follow Panchashil, but they, they don't want to. They don't want to. The point is, now that we go through the background and we go through their activities during this period. Yeah. We see that they have been prepare, preparing for this um, yeah. attack you know, or incursions. And they have, their forces have been moving, their forces have been sort of uh, positioning themselves for this event. And they are actually positioning themselves for a sort of a taking position, taking place as a major world power because American power is declining and they see a vacant position and they are positioning towards that side. Now, India has to make up its mind what to do because India cannot sort of ignore China. It's a neighboring country. Not ignore, no. it's, uh, it's not like Europe or uh, USA where you are far away and talk about Chinese closing the Chinese consulate and uh, talk about tariffs and all. Here we have somebody who is who is trying to instigate your neighbors. And if we are having problems with Nepal, we are having uh, China has been instigating Bhutan. Um, on that, on that uh, land issue, then China has been uh, pumping money into Bangladesh. Uh, China has found a container port in Hidambota or whatever it is called in Sri Lanka. So we, China has been surrounding us uh, with various uh, means where it can, it is in a position of sort of uh, uh, surrounding us and um, keeping us on, on tight uh, rope. Now, why? Now, this last minute and you know, desperate purchases of arm, armaments, planes, missile systems, why couldn't this be done earlier? Why the sudden, the last minute, come on, buy, let us buy weapons, buy this, buy that. Is, is it because of the bureaucracy that's moving so slow? I mean, what's happening? Or no, I would, I would say the bureaucracy is moving a bit fast because this uh, Rafael, which has come in, has been in the pipeline for the last 20 years. Discussion with Dassault. As a matter of fact, if I was reading somewhere that Dassault was the uh, supplier of our first Air Force aircraft even. And I think uh, uh, Tata, JRD Tata was a great friend with uh, Dassault. Mm -hmm. so Dassault have an old relationship and uh, things were going on till one bright day our uh, uh, Congress uh, Defense Minister, Anthony, yeah, said, uh, we are not prepared, we don't have the budget, and, this and everything was postponed. It was only when Modi government came in, it was restarted, and uh, we we sort of, uh, although paid much more, but we initially uh, scrapped that. At that time, we were buying 136 Rafaels. Yeah. We are not buying 36 Rafaels, at around to a higher cost, but with uh, different modifications and the different adaptations for our requirements. I like, say, a country like Sweden, which is much smaller than India, they have their own fighter jets, the Gripen fighters. Mm -hmm. why, can't, why can't India, with this amount of money, we could have designed and developed our own planes, isn't it? We have this, this problem 
technology transfer, this limitation of technology transfer, the Western countries have been doing inbreeding the transfers among themselves. We didn't have the technology. Uh, we have a different technology and we are making, making those uh, our equipment and our aircrafts under a different technology, which is still not, uh, I think, beyond the third generation when Rafale is fifth generation. So we, we, we have not crossed those generations as yet. I don't know which uh, generation we are in. Tejas, yeah. Tejas, I don't know. That's what Tejas, Tejas was the last. And Tejas, I think, was third in his third generation. I'm not so sure. But uh, technology-wise, we are not up to mar up to date with them. But we can send spaceship to Mars and uh, rockets yeah. as well. We have used our own technology. We, we, that is, again, our own technology. I think... Um, uh, of course, uh, there have been inputs from various uh, scientists in every place, but then the technology is ours. So, I, I don't know, Mane, you have a valid question over there, but uh, uh, we, we, we are a new country also. I mean, you are talking about Sweden and Europe, who have been there for so many hundreds of years, and uh, so closely associated with all the... Uh, uh, developed countries in that area, so you know, we we have to pay the cost of being a developing nation. So much of money in our defense production, and otherwise uh, we'll we'll start working like Pakistanis who have much, much bigger proportion of uh, money in defense production and defense uh, area, but still not developing anywhere else. What about Iran? What is the new thing there? I mean, uh, they are going to build that railway from Chabahar to Afghanistan. And yeah, they don't that, that, to it and... Yeah, that's in China. Uh, you see, Iran has been thrown into Chinese lab by the Americans. Yeah, India is affected, you see. With the sanctions, and India is, India was, India is still in doing that Chaba, that railway project, but to a different area, which will link it in Chabahar to Afghanistan. But mm. the uh, railway project with the Chinese which are doing is, is a part of the Belt and Road Initiative, which takes a part of um, connectivity from China to, that, uh, to the Gulf of Hormuz. And you'll see, China has been planning positioning, on. positioning itself at every important Navigation point or um, military point. When it, right, if you start from China, you will see that from South China Sea is something straight of Malacca, where they have been patrolling, and the Americans have just now said, mm. "No, no, this by sending two anti-aircraft." And then they come to. They've got ports in uh, Burma with the container ports in Burma. They've got in Chittagong, and then you've got in. Uh, so does it does it mean that India does not have any sort of strategic thinkers or in the government? There's nobody to think ahead. You see, in we 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 again the same thing. We have been aligned with everybody and um, I mean, friends with everybody, aligned with none. And we we are not an aggressive power. We are a pacifist power. So and not even a power, a soft power as such. So the designs which the Chinese have which the imperial China, the Middle Kingdom, and trying to position themselves to take over the world's biggest superpower, we are not in that league, number one. I mean, so what we are, is, if somebody comes to hit us or beat us, we say, okay, I'm going to do Shia Shasana. That's not, that's not, that's not enough. That's what Gandhi <laughs> told you. Ridiculous, <laughs> isn't it? I agree with you that Gandhi ji was all, always not always correct. In the modern perspective, mm -hmm. but then we we in India as uh, we have never been an aggressive power as such, and therefore we have. Been, and I will agree that we have become soft. We have uh, uh, sort of uh, not seen aggression in the sense that the Europeans have seen or the Americans have seen the civil war. We have not seen it, and, yes. and all the the we have seen. seen that is in our psyche, isn't it? That is in our psyche. So we have to come out of it and. Uh, uh, coming out of it uh, would take time. It, it, it doesn't happen instantaneously. And you see, as a nation even, again, coming back to the same thing, we are a 70-year-old nation. So uh, to evolve that sort of, uh, what you call, strength and inner collectivity is, 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 is taking time because till, till the Brits uh, united us, we were still 
different Maharajas and different countries and different states everywhere. So I, I agree with your uh, concern that why are we not doing it, but uh, we, we are handling the things to the extent, like Chinese, we have control. The only thing is that now we have to keep on pushing in some more um, money, more defense equipment, more people, and there are files and uh, whatnot on that uh, side, so that uh, uh, these aggressions are basically Chinese intentions to divert attention. Uh, I, I don't see much, much is gained by China in taking these small chunks uh, of land from India in terms of actual gaining any strategic advantage. Uh, the strategic, strategic advantage they are gaining by doing this at this moment is to keep keeping, India China, keeping India away from any alignment with the Western nations, any alignment with the... They, they keep, want to keep us engaged with them. That is that is one thing, and then uh, again, uh, trying to form a circle around us is to sort of manage the only formidable power next to China is us, India, and India would be a major factor in their calculations as a superpower, in terms of unless and until they keep uh, India in check and keep uh, keep India humored or whatever it is, uh, their dream of becoming a superpower would not fructify as quickly as they think uh, because Americans are generally with Trump again uh, things they have dissociated themselves from the leadership role uh, which uh, the Americans have traditionally been taking withdrawn from various United Nations institutions WHO and generally talking about that I've not got much in this now Another thing to see is this this regime is only short-lived in the sense that uh, this polls, polls are going down and you really don't know if he comes back. Comes back. So if he doesn't cap, would be a reverse, there, there'd be a reverse. So we have to wait for the, about another, another five or six months to see what the where the Americans would be going uh, after the elections. I don't think there'll be any continuity because... Uh, when uh, Joe Biden comes in, there, there will be changes in the American perspective towards the world. You know, coming to Canada and COVID, I mean, those are two big things. Uh, India Canada, and COVID. Yeah, yeah COVID, uh, we, Canada has controlled it. Let's be happy about it. It's flattened out and uh, uh, there are not many cases nowadays. In, in Ontario, there were only about 100, 120 and for the last... Four or five days, it has not increased. There was five counties had nothing. Seventeen municipalities, no zero now. So Canada has done well in controlling COVID, but then the issues which are coming up is that the stage three has come in and everything has opened up. So one will have to wait and see for the next 10, 15 days for the spike, if any happens, and see what would be the situation at that time. I don't expect when people are reasonably, if people keep the reasonable distancing, social distancing and all the um, social protocols, I think it should be all right. But the, another thing which is coming after a month or so is the opening of the schools, which, which again, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure the government would not have any other option but to open five days a week for, for all the schools because uh, if you want to open up your economy and people to come back to work, opening with the schools were, uh, was a natural uh, uh, precondition which had to be done. Now, children are less susceptible to COVID. That is, accepted. that is scientifically and medically being seen and proved. But still, children in close proximity, especially in the lower kindergarten and in those areas where people interact with and interact with each other closely and children it's very difficult to keep the social distancing and personal hygiene and cleaning and all uh, as per the protocol so one has to watch very carefully as to what happens at that stage and then one, if, we, if we avoid the spike at that time we are over we uh, will throw do you hear about this, the gold smuggling that's going on from kerala you are the embassy uh, embassy staff have fled the country when uh, they cannot do anything diplomatically, of course, they? They did not 
flee the countries they were sort of to took up took a you ticket to go. <laughs> and you used to go because you could not do anything but then the lady who was arrested uh, was doing it and the thing pin they have been arrested a couple of politicians have been uh, but now she says that they were bribing the diplomat that for each consignment in the diplomatic baggage uh, money was being handed over in american dollars to the uh, to this uh, uh, you see nothing can come in diplom in the diplomatic bag without the knowledge of and the receiver knowing things about it so there there has been has to be a nexus of people who are doing something wrong and if they were doing wrong they would be doing for a consideration yeah. so that consideration is being paid via the channel through the attache in the consulate over there who who would definitely face the music when he returns he returns he, returns, he would have been arrested by his own people and would be charged under whatever acts because he he would have committed a crime in usa you united arab emirates because uh, uh, one can be very confident that the smuggling was not with, done with the consent of the government so yeah. it was a private enterprise between some officials over there and some officials over here after the reputation of the country yeah yeah, yeah. so that is being taken care of uh, the only thing is uh, i heard some some news about it being the terror funding funding was done through this yeah, gold and arrested a lot of people from uh, the malappuram yeah. main where there's a lot of this gold smuggling uh, where the gold is handed over so one will have to be careful in these cases in terms of uh, terror funding because uh, much money is coming the hawala money is being circulated and then yes, 800 kilos of gold is a massive amount see <laughs> what happens next mean um the well, about this um to justin trudeau and the uh, oh, i don't know what what the problem with uh, our um, prime minister trudeau is he is a politician he says oh that is a mistake that's it that is hard time he says that's a mistake and our conservative people say that oh, this is strike three so you are out <laughs> but definitely there will be a fall this is not going to okay. so easily uh, today again in the press conference today and uh, the meetings yesterday he said i am sorry but i had pushed it back but uh, uh, if a, and uh, due diligence was done by the civil servants so civil servants the head the head of staff and the uh, the finance minister morning is blaming it on them these people are on the hook now yeah. because of the covid uh, nothing will happen to trudeau that is my feeling because the country has to be led in the, the, the different times but some heads will fall definitely and whether it's more new or a chief of his chief, chief of staff or some a couple of senior civil servants things yeah. will happen and uh, conservatives will keep on uh, hitting on it even uh, ndp is hitting on it so the and the coalition has survived because of covid coalition has been surviving i don't know what would have happened without the covid but then they are um, management covid has been managed very well um, people's uh, uh, rehabilitation and uh, the funding for people funding for students have been handled very well uh, but why this we <laughs> why this we there was no need there was no need for Uh, when you could have uh, sort of taken a bid, a quick bid, and we know the urgencies. And Not quick bid, it's almost one billion dollars. One no, billion, no, big amount, and uh, all these people have been taking benefits from those uh, that uh, organization. That, that this was a clear case of uh, totally sort of uh, excluding himself from all oh. concerns. A government not, does not give any one bid uh, contract to generally anybody. When I have been in government, I understand that there is a process, and even if civil servants say that okay, he is the only guy, and you get so easily convinced, it's not done. So Trudeau has some compulsive problems of uh, not. Uh, uh, he thinks that if saying sorry will absolve him from everything, but uh, after post COVID, I think there'll be. he has to be a bit more careful that is i would say because 
his government and his good, at least his good performance in COVID is sort of just tarnished because of this uh, one single bad move. Anyway, I think uh, we have covered some uh, major topics today and then uh, we'll continue with, uh, with it next week, Praveen. Yes, of course. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Next. Thanks a lot, Praveen, again. And uh, thank you for uh, uh, watching VNN. Thank you.